I played the game Wings of War World War II when it originally came out and I fell in love with it. I just loved it. It was a lot of first sight. I purchased the uh, original deluxe starter set, the big box that you see here, which contains four miniature airplanes and all that you need to play the game. And I just liked the game so much that then I added a lot of extra airplanes which can be purchased independently. So you can play different types of scenarios or simply you put them all together for some very substantial dogfights. All of these boxes are extra airplanes. I just love the game uh, for uh, the simplicity of its core system. There are just a couple of rules that you need to play the game but very simple rules. You can teach them to a six or seven year old in a couple of minutes and then you can just play the game with your kids minutes after you open the box. But then you also have a lot of optional rules that you can add to add more flavor, more detail, more theme, and the game can be much more complex and feel much more realistic, while still being very intuitive. This is a miniature game of air combat that still plays very really smoothly, you do not have bookkeeping to worry about, you do not have complex measurement that you need to complete. It is a game that is very playable, even though, well, you do have the sense that you're playing a very nice and and very uh, involving and very engaging miniature game, which is great. So since I had such a, a good experience with the uh, original game, Wings of War, World War II, I was really curious about trying the new edition when I knew that the new edition was coming out. This one was called Wings of Glory, World War II. Uh, the starter box looks very similar uh, to the original box. Anyways, I picked it up, I played a new game, I learned the new rules and well in this review I'm going to tell you about first about the system in general the system behind both Wings of War World War II and Wings of Glory World War II uh, especially because they're almost the same the rule book has been reorganized for the new edition but the rules are pretty much the same they're only minor tweaks but the game feels and plays pretty much like it used to. So I'm going to tell about the game in general. Among all the many rules that are possible, uh, that can be possibly used in the game, I'm going to tell about the basic ones and then some of the ones that we use most commonly. Not even all of them, I'm just going to select some of the rules. For example, I'm going to skip altitude, which we always use. Uh, uh, just because I want to give you a sense of the game as it can be a little more than in its really basic incarnation but I don't want to go uh, too much in detail and telling about all, tell about all the things that can be used in the game because the game can be pretty detailed uh, if you decide to use all or most of the optional rules. So in any case I'm going to tell about the system in general and then I'm going to share my general impressions and ideas with you about this new edition, this new incarnation of the system. I'm also going to film a separate video for the components to compare the components of Wings of War World War II and Wings of Glory World War II in case you are interested in knowing more about the components but in this video I'm mainly going to talk about gameplay. At the beginning of the game each player receives one or several airplanes. For each airplane there is a miniature um, that comes with this super nice sculpture of the airplane and the base and a series of packs that I use to indicate the altitude of the airplane. Each airplane also comes with a <clears throat> console where you place the card with the stats of your airplane, the damage that the airplane can inflict and the amount of damage that the airplane can take, the amount indicated is indicated by that number. Then you have a maneuver deck which indicates the type of movements that your airplane can perform. Uh, these maneuver cards can always be used, meaning that you can go through the deck and choose any card you want. It is not that you have to draw some of these cards and form a hand and then only use those cards. There are restrictions, meaning that certain movements cannot be played one after the other, one immediately after the other, and certain sequences of movements must be uh, performed in order to uh, be able to execute special maneuvers but generally speaking you can always go through the deck and choose your cards. 
Here you have two slots where you place two cards, one indicating the movement you're executing right now and one your next movement. You also have movement tokens. Here you place the one that indicates your um, present speed uh, and you use the blue token for high speed and you use the white token for low speed. On each maneuver card, you also place face down a token indicating um, your speed in your next move. You can place a blank token there if you indicate that you're retaining your present speed or a token of the opposite speed if you're changing from low to high or from high to low. Then, how does it work? Well, very simple. Players plan their movement simultaneously and secretly, then they simultaneously reveal their movement card and their speed token. In this case, my airplane there decided not to change speed, so we keep moving at high speed. And then I reveal the maneuver card. I place the maneuver card with the arrow that applies to my speed, the blue for high and white for low. I place the bottom of that arrow against this black line here in front of my airplane, right there. Then I move my airplane so that the arrow at the base of, well, of the base, at the bottom of the base, uh, matches the arrow in front of the arrow of the speed that I chose. Again, I use the blue arrow there. And so uh, my airplane just executed that movement and ended movement there. And suppose that this airplane here after moving is here. After all airplanes moved, then airplanes can fire at each other. You can fire at airplanes that are in your arc of fire. The arc of fire is indicated by those two lines departing from the base of your airplane. And you use this ruler. If you can place the ruler that touching the pegs under your airplane and within your arc of fire and the ruler can touch uh, the base of an opponent's airplanes or if you're using a variant that we use very often if you can touch the, sil the actual silhouette of the airplane so not just you know any corner there well if you're touching the base or you're touching the airplane depending on the variant that you're playing then you uh, are you have hit the opponent and if you touch the opponent with this sections, section of the ruler, then this is a hit at, at long range. And if you're touching it with the closed section of the ruler, then it is a hit at close range. Your airplane tells you the type of hit that is inflicted in each case. This airplane, for example, inflicts three damage type B at short range and a damage type A and a damage type B at long range. Suppose that we have hit that opponent at... Uh, what was that? Mm, it can be short or long, again, depending uh, on the variant that you're playing. If you're hitting the silhouette, it is long, so let's say long range. As you can see, there are different types of damage here. A, B, C, and D, indicated by these counters. These are the least dangerous and these are the most terrible damages. The player that was the target draws the uh, required amount of damage markers and looks at them secretly. These damage markers may have numbers that go from zero to, well, very high numbers, or they may indicate special types of damage, special types of effects. For example, it may be that your rudder jams or your airplane catches on fire or your pilot is wounded. They're just different types of effect. And the numbers really can vary from zero to, well, way more. Just to give an example of a, what a D type of damage may be. The cool thing is that after you receive your damage, you look at it and then you place the damage counters face down on the console of your airplane or on the card of your airplane. The opponent knows that you were hit but doesn't know exactly the amount uh, or the type of damage. If your airplane starts acting funny then the opponent can uh, try to figure out what type of special damage was inflicted but if it's just a structural damage so a number the opponent doesn't know exactly if your airplane is almost destroyed if uh, actually look like you were hit but no damage was inflicted 
and of course uh, this is a very nice interesting element of fog of war after all fire has been resolved you switch your present card to the right slot you choose your next maneuver card and you place it there and again you choose one of your speed tokens to place uh, on top of the card again face down and this is pretty much how the game works you keep planning movement resolving movement resolving fire until your opponent or opponents are all destroyed if this is a dogfight type of scenario or until the special victory conditions of the scenario that you're playing that have been met I love this game. I love the system uh, both in Wings of War, World War II and Wings of Glory and the two of them are just so similar. I think it is a fantastic system. It is just so much fun to play. The action is smooth and <clears throat> continuous. There is a very nice balance between a certain commitment to certain maneuvers that you have to execute because you chose your next card the previous turn but then still a strong interaction you play a card resolve it look at the situation on the board and you decide your next move again it is right that you have some commitment because you are you know flying airplanes not driving bikes they're not you cannot change direction as fast and quickly but at the same time you still have a good interaction and reaction time you know you have a chance to react to what the opponent is doing still there's a huge bluffing component you should keep your intentions as secret as possible try to fool your opponent you have to figure out the ways in which the opponent is trying to fool you all this comes together with of course the spatial miniature element the game feels so thematic those miniatures just add so much flavor so much theme and it is uh, even better, of course, if you add more of the optional rules that I haven't covered in this review. And you really have a lot of rules that you can choose from. You have altitudes, special maneuvers, special weapons, uh, different types of pilots, different types of damage, uh, bombardment, different types of missions that can be completed. And once you play the game, you really realize that if there is anything that is not covered by the game that you want to add, it is very easy to figure out how to abstract things and and to uh, make them part of the game. The game is very flexible, it is extendable in a lot of different ways. It is a system that I love, I simply love, I think it is just, a, it is just so much fun. Visually speaking, it is a lot of fun. Uh, there is a luck factor which is considerable, yes, you may hit the opponent several times or believe you have hit the opponent and you really haven't dealt any damage or the opponent receives a lot of damage uh, in one lucky strike and maybe you got hit once and your airplane blows up because you just received that special damage that destroys your airplane. It is a, a game breaker, a deal breaker, it shouldn't be because it is thematic, things like this could happen, did happen. If you cannot deal with them, again, maybe this is not the theme for you. The game captures this a huge, I would say huge, a considerable um, lack factor that that even though it is considerable feels right because it fits well with the theme. I just love this game. Fun to play, exciting, just so much replay value, so much flexibility and it is great that you can play with your young children or with your adult friend just by adjusting the number and type of rules that you are using. So I love uh, Wings of Glory where we're two but pretty much because I love I loved and still love Wings of War World War II because the two games really are pretty much the same. The changes are so minor that I don't see any way in which if you love the first game you're not going to love Wings of Glory or if you hated the first one uh, the second one is going to make any difference. This is a fantastic game in its, in its two incarnations Wings of Glory World War II and Wings of War World War II the system is beautiful Beautiful. It's fun, it, ex it is exciting, it is to me a must have in the collection of any gamer, we're gaming aficionados or not, it is something that you should play because I think it is something you're going to love. Uh, if you want to start from Wings of Glory, that is great, if you find a copy that is more affordable, um, a copy of Wings of War or World War II that is more affordable, I don't think it is a big deal if you start from there. Really, this is a great system, either incarnation of the system is going to be a great experience for you.